Go, go, go. On a big yeah, world adventure. adventure. Tell me you're a parent without telling me you're a parent. Do you know the Thomas and Friends theme song? We actually think it's one of the top the three. End, don't the we? ending one is, yeah. Wednesday morning B&M trip. Let's go. Just here for a bit of fun. We're here for a good time. Not a long time. You know that? Oh, my neck, Ellie. Have oh, we told God. everyone about my neck? I don't think yeah. anyone wants to know about your neck. My yes, neck. darling, the digger. There's been a digger in groundworks outside of our house for about two weeks now. And I actually think it's as much of an obsession as the Hoover. Don't say both in the same sentence, Ellie. Christ, what do you want to He's being distracted by Choo Choo right now. Don't say the other <laughs> word as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, go, go to B&M Home Store. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Put your coat on. Oh, quick, is someone coming? <laughs> Should you do the zip up, Mum, or not? Nah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, okay. Can you say up? Up. Zip goes up. Saint, are you ready to go do some shopping in B&M? Hold Daddy's hand. Yeah. You got hold Daddy's hand? Mama. Oh, my love. Fine. No, Con, you've actually been the preferred parent for about what feels like 500 days now. You want to hold Mum's hand? Don't break my pregnant heart, Saint. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, go, go. Yay! Yay! <gasps> hold on. Hi, <coughs> <laughs> mate. Hey, first up on the list, we need to get some carpet cleaner. Do you want to explain why? Do you want to explain why, Saint? You guys actually aren't going to oh, believe it. I'll tell you it. what, I'm actually going to get this as well. I feel like we need to clean our oven. Yeah, we could probably do it with an oven clean. Oh, we should probably get the flash oh, God. spray yeah, as well. We do you know what? Know. Let's wait until we get down the actual cleaning aisle. That's not even the cleaning what aisle. What are you saying, babe? So if you guys saw the last video, you would know that we are in the process of obviously doing Baby Boy's nursery. At the moment, it's just a completely bare room. We are basically waiting for all of the furniture to, to arrive. And the other day, we went out for some dinner, which happened to be right next to the cinema. So Connor was like, I really want to go and watch Ant-Man. So I said, who are you going to go? He said, oh, I don't know. I'm like, on my own. Is that the first time you've been to cinema on your own? Yeah. Love it. Be the last. Recommend? Sensational. Did I think of my own pace? Got myself a large diet coke, got myself a large popcorn. Excuse me. Sat there. You actually did say you missed me though. Okay. Yeah, you're not such a time run like that. Anyway, so off Connor went to go and watch Ant Man. Me and little Bops went home. So mum was running around doing bedtime routine. Saint was running around, obviously in the nude because he's about to get in the bath. He ran into baby brother's room just as his bath had finished running. So in I went to go and pick him up and take him into the bath. As I did that, we had a ginormous number two explosion. Went all over my hand, all over my outfit, which luckily was not. I think I was in my pajamas at that point. All over the mirror all over the wall all over the carpet then he proceeded to do it in the bath as well anyway totally not a big deal you know these things happen only accidents happen it doesn't matter yeah no no okay let's say to bed blah 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 like cleaned up but then i realized i didn't have any carpet cleaner so that's why we needed that's what saint thinks of baby brother's room at least it's going to be a funny story to tell your baby brother yeah for the years to come. If anybody is in need of a rainy day activity with the kids, come to the B&M toy aisle. We have so much fun down here. Nice. Good kick. And again, kick it to Dad. Whoa, football match going on in the middle of B&M. Whoa. Doing hoovering. Hoover. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Nose. Tap. 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 <laughs> You're making yourself giggle in the mirror. No Give Saint a kiss. Aww. Saint, what blusher should mummy wear today? What do you think, Charlotte Tilbury or Nas? Nana. Nana? Nana. Um, this one? Um. Okay, thank you very much. Want to come and help? Yeah. 
Where's Mummy's brush? Oh, let's be a bit careful. Look at your thumb on our joggers. Nice. Oh, good idea. Maybe if we put our concealer in the blusher, that will be a good brush option. Mummy doesn't know where her blusher brush is. I might have to just use the other one, babe. Oh, quick hoover while we help Mum get ready, yeah? Yeah. Ooh. Okay, bye. 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 Bye-bye. Bye. You have no idea how blessed I feel that one of his favourite activities is to help me get ready. <laughs> pat, pat. That's a good idea, isn't it? Pat, pat. Thank you. And this side. Thank you, darling. Saint, do you like helping mummy get ready? Yeah. You do? I love it. Yeah. Ear. Yeah. Nose? No. Mouth? Eyes. Thank you. Head. Yeah. Pat pat. That's lovely makeup. That's really lovely. You look gorgeous. <gasps> Spot goes to the farm. What? Okay, we're going to be bougie and have McDonald's on plates. Well, me and Dada are. Yeah, you're going to have yours and you'll have them. Ah. Oh, me, babe. Ta. Oh. 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 Dad needs to sit like this because he needs some, something to rest on. Dad's. I need to else. Feeling old today. What did you get us then? Double cheeseburger. Who's that for? You. Really? Thank you. Triple cheeseburger. Who's that for? Of course, Me. you always have to have one better. I'm really impressed that you remembered that I like a little extra something something on my McDonald's. Honey, you've been doing it for nine years. Quarter what? pounder with cheese. And a Big Mac. Yeah, a Big Mac for me. And a quarter pounder with cheese for me. That's what you normally get. Chicken sandwich, babe. No, nah, you don't get a quarter pounder and cheese. No, I don't. You get a quarter pounder? No, I don't. You do? No, I don't. What did you say? What did you say you normally get? Chicken sandwich. No, you don't normally get a chicken sandwich. Connor, do you? I always get a chicken sandwich. Eat the chicken that Saint's trying to give me. I think you don't. Look, chicken sandwich. They don't have that. Look, chicken sandwich. They don't have that, Ellie. What are you on about? They've never had that. It, it I don't know what planet you're living on, Con. Anyway. Listen, guys. Yesterday, he told me that Eminem sang. <laughs> no, he did. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> What song is it called? By Fort Manor. <laughs> I thought you know, no, you said that. Like. Fort Manor. Yeah, this Connor. Remember that? Something called a McChicken sandwich that I always get. I've I don't think I've literally you ever don't. ordered a quarter pounder of cheese. No, I'm okay, really upset. You don't have a quarter pounder. They so you got me two big cheeseburgers. Well, you normally have Ellie. Yes, <laughs> no, it is. Not. Ellie, they don't do chicken sandwiches anymore. God, I don't know. What's yeah. happened to you in the last couple of days? What is that song? I need to get it up. 1% oh. luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power, power and will. will. Remember the name, that's it. Yeah, Connor told me that it was Eminem that sang that song yesterday, guys. I was like, he was so sure. Oh, are you helping me? Tell Thank me it doesn't you. sound like Eminem, though. Thank you, darling. And when we saw it was released 12 years ago, oh. same as no. Connor was like... It was, no! What do you want, babe? Yeah. Bin. Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, this can be the bin. Oh, look. Should we put, put all of bin? the stuff in the bin? Bin. Can you do daddy's as well? Can you put that in the bin? And then Good can boy. you do daddy's chips as well, please? Did you get any barbecue sauce? No. Wow. Don't good job. Pretend you didn't hear me. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm -mm. Say, can you say, picnic in the playroom? Mm -mm -mm. 
You want to play piano? Come on there, let's play the piano. I hope everyone's ready to hear a child prodigy on the piano. <laughs> family map bang. Let's just do it in the playroom so our toddler can have fun. It might not be the most aesthetic guys, okay? But let me tell you, I had big dreams for this playroom. I had big, big ideas. When you have a toddler, aesthetic goes out of the window. By the time they turn 18 months, you have diggers, monster trucks, buses, sticker books, all of it. You know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. The only thing is, I'm quite concerned how the newborn is gonna, you know, just be chilling here while Saint is Going crazy. doing his thing. When Saint was a newborn and this was the playroom, we had a gorgeous sofa there. Saint could just relax on his baby gym. We daren't do that with the new baby, so have a bigger bolt on his head. Question for Saint from Kerry. Who is your favorite, mummy or daddy? Saint, who do you prefer, mummy or daddy? Daddy. That is not the truth. a fair question. You'd say them. You do it the same way I did it. Show mummy what we did. You would upside down. We, we are mummy. Oh. No, in all honesty, my pregnant heart has actually been really emotional <laughs> recently. Because... <laughs> it does the boo up. Yeah, okay, Connor. Right? Okay. <laughs> I feel like he's come back onto mum territory recently. When we were in Dubai, I... Did I actually cry at one point? He's just so much of a daddy's boy at the moment. And don't get me wrong, in the moments it matters, like he's hurt himself by accident, he's tired, he still comes running to mama. Because he's coming a bit of a group, isn't he? I actually seen. spoke to my therapist about it. And she said that she thinks kind of just exploring the fact that he is a boy and so is dada and yeah like content stuff like play fighting and being chased around being chased and you know stuff that i just can't do when i am this pregnant she also interestingly said that even though obviously saying is kind of too young really to understand that there's a newborn baby about to enter his world and he's about to become a big brother like she said on some level he will be understanding that i am pregnant and that like there's a change it's just so gorgeous that music babe is that how you feel about having a baby <laughs> all the low tones <laughs> these aren't quite the old school mukbangs we used to be able to film are they <laughs> They're pretty much just watch us eat and play with our son. Shona asks, do you see your home now being your forever home? If not, what's your dream home? Living in America, Florida or Texas. If we're in Florida, we'll get the universal passes on a discount. Oh. We'll get... Why would we get them on a discount? Because you live in Orlando, you get a discount. Oh, really? You know, the American dream. That's what I'm living. My son will be the jock and the prom king. <laughs> Is this our forever home now, you tell me? Mm -mm. Was that the question? Yeah. Mm -mm. So one thing we've actually just, I don't know, not got round to telling you, I guess, is that we're moving house. <laughs> No, trying we're, to well, move we're house. Trying to. We're trying to move house. Oh my gosh, it's been such a long journey with it. We decided actually about this time last year that we wanted to move. I don't think we ended up putting a house on the market until like summertime. Just a bit of hoovering going on in the in the wagon. He dropped some crumbs down in the piano. Our house actually sold. We were going at the time to be doing like this massive renovation project, but then we found out that I was pregnant, so we decided to pull out of the renovation project for multiple amount of reasons one being it would take a couple of years and with yeah. a baby on the way it just didn't it wasn't right was it it wasn't the right move for us obviously having seen lucy and jordan go through their big renovation process kind of gel definitely gel because we could be that like could be are. us right now but well we'd be a bit little bit behind that could have been that was on the cards that was the plan everything was full steam ahead our offer on this like same plot day. of land to renovate was accepted but mainly because that. the fact that i was newly pregnant we didn't know what oh, we would wow. be doing for like a base in terms of where we would live like would we just go into rented accommodation while the renovation was happening how long would the renovation take did we want to do that with the newborn wow, and the toddler that. and it just didn't feel right so we decided to pull out then we had another buyer for our house but we were being picky with 
the house that we were trying to find by. because at that point it was like now we are having two children and we kind of don't really want to be moving again for like honestly another like 10 years or so and of course if we're not moving for like that amount of time schools were like a huge thing again for ages there just didn't really seem to be anything that we loved <laughs> is there monkeys <laughs> then we finally found a house that we loved we had a buyer for this house again and unfortunately our buyer fell through so now our house is just back on the market Good and job. at this point We've said, like, honestly, whatever is meant to be will be. We are more than happy in this home. This is a gorgeous family home. We can, of course, accommodate for having two babies, probably even three babies here if we needed to. It's just personal preference that we move. Well, you know me, honey. I'm always up for moving. I'm always up for the adventure. If I said to Connor, do you just want to move to New Zealand right now? We've never been to New Zealand in life. He'd be like, yeah. I'll do it. We definitely won't be moving before the new baby arrives, so that yeah. I can say for sure. Oh, how did you know you were ready for number two? I have an 11 week old and I'm so broody already. I don't blame you. I was broody at 11 when he was 11 weeks. 11 weeks, did she say? 11 months? 11 weeks. That might just be your pre your postpartum post hormones. hormones, yeah. Con knows. I think the main thing was that we had an overarching want of a big family. Yeah. And we know we have to have kids to get that big family. <laughs> You know I mean? We know what we have to do. Yeah. It's an action plan. You always said you want to have kids close in age and also before you get to a certain age because then you could just concentrate on being a mum yeah. and not a pregnant one. Yeah. yeah, I honestly think that's the answer perfectly to be honest. Like, it wasn't anything about saint that made us feel like, okay, now he's at this level of development yeah. and he's at this age, we can finally have another one. It was like, we just wanted another baby. Yeah. We and just love being parents so much. So it's always that sort of guessing game, are we going to be ready? But you're always going to be ready at the end of the day. Regardless of the situation, you're always being ready because guess what? How many things best thing that could have happened to you, okay? You got this. Sainty, do you want to go for a sleep, baby? Do you want to go night-night? Hey. Night? <gasps> Want a nap? <laughs> you want to sleep on dad? Ah, uh, sleepy time. Uh, night, uh, night night. Night night. <laughs> Get him, Bob. Get him, Zayn. Okay, Get should him. we do row row quickly? One row row in a bed. Row row row, row, row your, your boat, boat gently down, down the stream. Oh, if you see a crocodile, don't, don't forget to scream. <laughs> I'm gonna get his feet now. I'm gonna get his feet. I'm gonna get his feet. Someone's <laughs> just gone and put Saint down for a nap, so. Ah, full attention. So, someone asked, what's your new secret project? Do you want to tell them now? Guys, I am so incredibly excited to announce that I am doing a podcast. Say what? This has honestly been such a long time coming. Look at the sun coming out, Connors. I just said that. Don't you think that's a sign from the universe? Yeah, you're glowing now. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I am finally doing the podcast I've been dreaming of doing for well over a year. I feel like I explained a little bit in the first episode why it's taken so long. But essentially, the time finally felt good to do it and it is something that i'm so incredibly excited about and the like genre of the podcast is something I'm really passionate and interested in and i just think it's gonna be a really really special i can't actually even see the screen no, now the sun is so bright right. thank you right universe now, yeah. for telling me it's the right move <laughs> hopefully you guys are gonna like it that's gonna be really good i could just sense it else I'll tell you what, guys, every time, anytime myself or anyone comes to Els for a bit of advice or a little chat, you got some you got some wisdom in there, Els, I'll give you that one. I'm excited for everyone to be able to hear it. Yeah, keep your eyes peeled for the official podcast trailer. It's coming very, very soon. Like, literally, could be tonight. You don't know. We're super excited for it, aren't we? Because <sighs> yeah. it's, all, it's all, like, we've done it all as well. Like, yeah. we haven't gone to, like, a producer or anything. Yeah. It's just... The just old a school. Passion project. Stop going Sorry. to fist bump me. It's on your just wife. the old school, Ellie and Con. 
making our way through life, aren't we? Yeah. We're just giving it a go. And honestly, I would just say, if you want to do something in life, just do it. I feel like if you have a calling to do something, that is like your best self, your higher self, giving you little like breadcrumbs of where where you should be going. And all it takes is a little bit of courage, a little bit of bravery, a little bit of self-belief. Just don't know what you could achieve with that idea that seems so small in your mind right now. Idea that's always there, just yeah. at the back of your head. Like, oh. I think that's really important. I think if it is always there and the idea for this podcast has been there for years. Like it took me to get to like a certain level of knowing myself and mm. I needed to get to a certain point in my journey of life before I could really jump on it. And don't get me wrong, there's no such thing as perfect timing, but I really waited until it felt right. good to start and I'm just incredibly excited, but... Oh, you're giving spoilers to the first episode. You guys have to wait. Just your daily reminder today, nobody else has told you if you have a little niggle in the back of your mind about an idea that you think could be really cool a direction in which your life feels like it should be going please follow it you are doing yourself such a disservice in life if you ignore those inner thoughts those inner thoughts those signs i feel like your imagination is your true self trying to break out yeah look at me God, you've been me spending too much time am, with me <laughs> Everything podcast, keep your eyes peeled on my socials. Literally could not be more excited to finally share it with you all after all this time. Gracie said, on your USA trip, where did you go? I remember you always wanting to do that. That's so sweet. Thank you, Gracie. Shout out, Gracie. When we were offline and we were just taking some time, we decided to do the road trip of dreams. The trip we'd always been wanting to do. We decided it was a good time for us because Saint was still relatively very little. I believe he was like maybe eight months. We flew into Orlando, Orlando of course. <laughs> we did like <clears> all <throat> of the parks. Disney, Universal, Epcot. We then actually did like a miniature road trip of Florida. So we then went down to... We picked to... up a little, a little minivan sort of thing, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. We drove from Orlando over to Clear water. Clear water. Oh god, I can't and even remember now, Well, I'm about to tell you. Well, Annie. I'm getting up the map for Florida to make sure you're saying it all properly. And then from Clearwater, we drove down to Florida Keys, which and we, was. We stopped off at Naples, didn't we? We stopped oh, off yeah, at like all of these little. The Everglades. Florida Keys did. was incredible. Florida Keys Highly was. Highly recommend it. Oh, that in itself was a trip of a lifetime. Like. Even just driving there. Because you're literally driving on Water. two two bridge two long bridges going across from I don't know like mainland Florida to Florida Keys. It was just the best time. And there's little towns in between which you could stop off. We stopped off and had brunch. Didn't I we? just can't even actually explain to you. Like I think back to that lunch we had when we had just arrived into the actual Keys. Like got off that long bridge across the ocean. We stopped off. It was it like Mrs. Crabs or it was like a... what? And you fancy the waiter. Connor. Yeah, you four. I forgot about he that. Was, <laughs> he was good looking bloke. He was beautiful, Connor. And I only say that because he had similar eyes to Saint. And it made me think, I didn't fancy him, but I just thought, what a beautiful man. My son might look <laughs> like that one day. And then it broke my heart. Yeah, I, I think of that lunch and I just think, one of the happiest moments of my life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And we didn't even realise it in that moment, did we? I mean, obviously we were happy, but like, it's one of those moments that you think, like, back on. Yeah, like a random moment. You think, oh, this lunch is nice, but am I actually going to yeah. remember it in five years' time? And when I'm, like, 65, I'm going to say to Con, do you remember that lunch? Do you remember that, man? You remember beautiful, that Woody. beautiful waiter. <laughs> <laughs> and then we flew from Key West to Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans was so cool. And it was actually the Mardi Gras. Yeah. When we flew in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So it was a very party scene. So there we were, walking around our pram, and like everyone else was like getting back drunk in, at like back 11 in, Yeah, back in uh, our hotel by six. <laughs> what piece of scene Watching was it? Netflix. Then we went to Texas, Austin. didn't we? We went to Austin. Barbecue food. Oh, don't even get me Austin. started. It's something me and Connor actually talk about every day. We <laughs> actually say to each other, do you know what I'd have for dinner tonight? Terry Black's. Terry Black's. Barbecue. Honestly, that's... Potentially the best meal I've ever had. Yeah. 100%. It was so good. And then we went for like a walk around the park after. And it was like life. 
And you remember you that little I mean? fluffy dog that yeah. said hello to Boppy? Yeah. Oh, and we can't talk now about this. Now do you guys this. know why I said my dream home is in America? We can't talk about this con because it makes me want to travel more. And I'm sell about to have house. a baby con. Sell a house and travel. I'm about to have a baby. Have the baby, get the passport, and we're off. <laughs> Um, then did we go to Vegas after that? Or did we go at any point? Yeah, we did go to Vegas. If anybody thinks you can't do Vegas with an eight month old, we're here to prove you wrong. Mm, I think yeah, we were fine. really lucky that we had friends out there. Obviously, it would still have been like so cool to just see Vegas anyway, because I don't know when either of us are going to be going to Vegas. <laughs> we did really cool stuff like a helicopter ride over the Grand Canyon. Lovely meals out. Yeah, like Vegas is just a vibe anyway. Owl's Kitchen, also oh, up there. Yeah. With America's is obviously Wellington. good for food. But also, we did have friends out there, so on some nights, Connor would Took go interns. out. I would go out. And then we went to. We went to LA. No, but we stopped off, didn't we, on the way? We were, basically, this trip, we saw the Joshua Tree. Oh, yeah. But this trip, when we were planning it, we wanted to do quite a lot of national parks. Yeah. That was like the whole reason we were going. We were like, let's just. We were actually going to do an RV. Do you remember? Yeah, we were. We were going to do an RV, but it ended up being like just as expensive to do an RV. And with Saint, he needed to be in the car seat, but there was only two seats in the RV yeah. and he wasn't allowed to be yeah. in the back. We had about a list as long as me of all the national parks, didn't we? <laughs> we ended up going to like park. two. Are you free, honey? Oh, <laughs> Come on, then? let's sell ourselves short. Yeah, we did Joshua Tree from Vegas. Driving. Joshua Tree was so cool, wasn't it? Joshua Tree was, yeah, sick as well. And then we went into LA and finished off in LA. I would say if it's accessible to you, travelling is just good for the soul. That's why I said you should travel before you have kids. We could have done so much more as well. Like, we, we so really, there was so yeah. much on our itinerary. We really changed it so many times. So what that is so common, we could just go back can't we? Exactly. And this time we'll have baby number two with us. And I know that Saint's never going to remember it because he was literally a tiny baby. But we got pictures to show him. Yeah. And it's pretty and cool videos. that we did that all with Saint. Saint travelled well. Saint travelled more than I travelled until I was like the age of 21. Question for Con, how to better connect with Bump? My partner seems to be struggling to bond. <sighs> Interesting question. I feel you shouldn't set yourself high expectations to connect with Bump. I was going to say that. Because obviously mum has the biggest and deepest connection. I feel like you can't compare your connection to theirs because it's yeah. always going to be massively different. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And as a bloke, obviously there's a connection there, but it's never going to be as strong. Like, yeah. I feel him kick, but it's like two or three times a day. But yeah. whatever, you're always feeling him kick. He's just that. He's my flesh is his flesh. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. So it's always it's always going to be different. And I also don't think... worry because the connection once baby's born. Oh, yeah. Like I just feel like if you're struggling to bond with Bump, please don't think that means you're going to struggle yeah. connecting with the baby. Because I, honestly speaking, just think the like dad's bonding with a bump and blah 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 is a pressure that actually necessary society has put on itself as of recently and i honestly think it's because of like nothing not there's anything wrong with it and of course cute i'm always up for seeing like cute videos of d dads to be like bonding with bumps yeah. but i think it's very easy for men to like see that and compare themselves don't talk to the baby bump or if you don't high five the baby bump and do a montage of yeah. it as the bump grows and then you find do a final one with the newborn and you high five the newborn it doesn't mean that you aren't a no. loving capable exactly. dad every every dad is different and that's your connection yeah do you know what i mean your connection is your connection it yeah. doesn't matter if it's not as overly affectionate as it doesn't matter if it's as affectionate as other dads to be are. But yeah, like I said, please, the men out there who are about to become dads, if you feel a bit like, I just see this bump on my girlfriend, wife, tummy, and I can't quite comprehend that there's a baby in there right now, and unless I go for a scan or whatever, don't worry about whether or not that's going to make you a father that can connect with the baby, because it's just two entirely separate things. we got all the men in there now. I... Guys, I gotta go. I'm late. Love ya. See you in the next vid. I hope Ellie answers a few good questions. 
I'm not Stop fist bumping fist you, I'm fist bumping me. Bart. That's not how Bart. I am not <laughs> Leah asked, are you going to be filming a bath vlog again? P.S. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Love you too. I would absolutely love to film another bath vlog. I genuinely feel like my birth video with Saint is the most precious thing to ever have in my entire life. I remember with Saint though, like I just kind of didn't really put any pressure on it and I just thought... I'm just gonna film and even if this is just something that ends up being more of like a home video for us to just reminisce with forever and it never like makes the internet then that's totally fine depending on how comfortable I felt with it and my attitude towards this birth is very very similar so hopefully you guys will be able to see but I guess it just all depends on how the birth goes and how baby and I end up doing and it's just such a special moment in life that I just don't want to like put that pressure of let's make sure we're getting content if we do end up getting a lovely birth vlog out of it that i feel comfortable enough sharing with you guys then absolutely i will of course upload it for you all to see and share that moment with us lauren asks have you got any travel plans for after the baby arrives love you guys at the moment i have just fully embraced the fact that this summer i am going to be on full on mum mode like i am going to be really settling into the flow of having two two under two for half the summer so i don't think i'm actually going to put any pressure on myself to do any traveling with like these ginormous plans this early on in the year i think i'm just going to wait until the baby is here see how we're all getting on and then maybe book like something if it feels okay too having said that we took saint to new york when he was four months old and it was like a walk in the park it was a doddle really honestly think traveling with babies and children genuinely the younger they are in life the more laid back of a holiday it can be and also it is Connor's 30th in June so I'm trying to make some plans for that anybody has any idea on any like nice things to do for a 30th birthday with two under two one of them being very young genuinely I need all the inspiration I can get right now so please if you have any ideas please comment below or DM me and final question because I know that this video is probably very long now, isn't it, Herbie? You're getting tired of hearing me talk. Louise asks, what are your top three parenting tips? I have a seven month old and you inspire me. First of all, I want to say thank you so much. That is the kindest, loveliest thing for you to say. I also want to say a huge congratulations on becoming a mummy and having a seven month old. How special for you. You're in such a wonderful part of your life. This is such a hard question because there's so much I want to share. Like there's so much I'd love to have a conversation with you all about parenting, but I think Number one, first thing that springs to my mind just off the bat is to always trust your intuition. You have your intuition as a mother, as a father, as a parent for a reason. Um, there is nobody else in this world that knows your baby better than you do. Sometimes in society or pressures from perhaps even sometimes other family members or friends or just general like other people in your life it can feel like sometimes you don't know your baby best but you do so please remember that if you follow your intuition you can't go wrong number two i would say surrender just surrender to parenthood surrender to the fact that your life is in this beautiful new flow and i know i keep using the word flow but genuinely i can't think of a better way to describe it than have different flows of life and before you have babies you are in one flow of life and that flow of life is i'm going to use the word selfish but i don't mean it in a negative manner whatsoever i just mean all you have to think about is yourself and that is so beautiful and bring you to such amazing places in life but when you have a baby you really learn what it is to love you think you know love and then you have a baby. With that love comes knowledge of true responsibility. And with that responsibility, I think parenthood can sometimes feel overwhelming, overstimulating. My advice is to surrender to it because the sooner you can surrender and really embrace your new flow of parenthood, the much quicker and the much easier it will be for you to really connect with the beauty within parenthood i think there's so much negativity at the moment on social media in particular about parenthood and having kids it's like you know every time i go on tiktok there's like a negative tiktok about being a parent there's something negative to say about having a toddler or having kids in general like it's always negativity i hardly ever see the beauty of parenthood and the 
fucking privilege and honour it is to have kids in this life on social media and I think that is something that is really actually wrong but I think the reason that parents can sometimes feel like that is because they haven't surrendered to it they're choosing to see the struggle and the pain. They're not tapping into their inner guidance, their inner emotion when they're feeling overstimulated. So that ends up being, my child is difficult, this, 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 this. My, my days personally are so much easier, so much lighter when I go through my day with the intention, really acknowledging and really embracing the fact that I am Saint's mum and that is who I am. And yes, sometimes, motherhood parenthood can feel just like that is your identity but i think if you're really paying attention to your feelings and how you are doing so much easier and i'm always going to be saints mum. he's not always going to need me as much as he needs me right now and the years he doesn't need me as much as he needs me right now i'm gonna break my heart <laughs> because being a parent is constant heartbreak it's constant letting go it's constant reminders that life is so short so when i surrender to the idea of motherhood and accept the fact that my to-do lists now are so much less overwhelming if i choose one good thing to get done that day over 50 things to get done that day like i used to be able to before i had saint then everyone's happier most importantly i'm happier because i've surrendered to my new flow of life and I think difficulty can occur overstimulation can occur and stress and anxiety can happen when trying to navigate motherhood parenthood with your old hat on your old I'm a single person in this life hat on I don't mean single as in like whether you're actually like romantically single or not I mean single as in you know you're the only one that you depend on gosh was that enough for three I feel like that was a lot it was two tips but it was a lot third and final tip and what I'm going to finish the video on is acknowledging when something that feels triggering in parenthood isn't coming from the child it's coming from something within you your child is triggering by their behavior their action their not wanting to eat their dinner their not wanting to get dressed like i really go into this in the first episode of my podcast but in short i think do yourself the service and your child the service of working through your own trauma your own baggage old thought patterns that aren't working for you at this stage in your life anymore self-limiting beliefs that aren't working for you at this stage anymore I think really giving yourself the time to know yourself, work through your stuff that you need to work through, makes you a much happier parent, therefore gives you a much happier baby. I know that all of those tips were quite like focused on, on self and on you rather than like, read the mother book a day, here's how to get them to eat vegetables, blah blah blah. In my opinion, what parenting really comes down to is love. So when we can get to a level in ourself where we understand that parenting in as an umbrella term as a topic feels easier and all of those little things like vegetables and nappies and play dates and whatever else feel a lot easier anyway i am gonna love you and leave you, thank you guys so much for watching today hope you enjoyed it can't wait for you guys to see sunday's video we are going shopping for baby boy and i'm really 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 excited to get him this first few bits and bobs and for it to all feel a lot more real but i love you guys eternally thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye